Wake Up Carolina on the iCorridor Talk Network. Cato's on the phone with someone now, I believe. We have with us on the phone the 45th President of the United States, former President Donald Trump. Mr. President, good morning. How are you? Well, good morning. I love your accent, too, by the way. I wish I had an accent. <laughs> well, we love yours as well, sir. That's we love yours, and, and we, we honestly miss you in the White House. We, we down south, well, uh, we, we, we cherish the opportunity to support you, and maybe we'll have that opportunity once again. I want to start and ask you this, because this is very important to me, and it's a bit self-serving and selfish, but, but you created a movement. I mean, you're not solely responsible, but you're largely responsible for this America First movement that has reinvigorated um, the, the American working class. Um, how does that movement continue to affect and change the Republican Party? Well, it's changing all the time. I see it. I endorsed uh, 33 people in Texas last week, and all of them won. Every single one of them won. And we have hundreds of endorsements to just like a couple of loss, losses. And these people are just all for America first and make America great again. And, you know, we made America great. We never had a period of time like we had just before the China virus came in. I mean, there was never a time. We had the best employment numbers ever, the, the best everything, every number. We were doubling up on China. We, You know the way they say China was catching us? I had them. They were going down economically. We were doing a job like nobody's ever done. And then the, the China virus came in, and we had to go back to work in a different way. And we did a great job and then brought it back a second time. And now we say, make America great again, again, you know, because we made it great. But now it's not great. America is not great. America has become an embarrassment. Uh, the leaders and, and the leader is, is just, it's just horrendous what they're doing. I mean, they're thinking of taking oil. We have all the oil in the world. We made our country energy independent. We were bigger than Russia. We were bigger than uh, Saudi Arabia combined. We were going to, we were going to be, in a short period of time, double the size of Russia and Saudi Arabia combined. And now we're we're looking for oil. We're begging people to give us oil. And uh, per barrel cost is going to go up to $200 very soon. I had it down to 30 And I had it down to less than 30 actually. In fact, we had so much oil, we had to help some of the companies because we had the price so low. And at the pump, we were $1.87, and now it's $5, $6. In California, it's $7. No. Uh, but we just learned yesterday one of their brilliant ideas. They're going to go to Venezuela and get oil, and they're going to go to Iran and get oil. It, this is unbelievable. Uh, they're going to take oil from every place they can except the United States and still going to be used over here. So I don't know what difference it makes environmentally. You know, you have this green movement is killing the United States, by the way. It's a hoax. And we had the cleanest air, the cleanest water on record in the last year of my administration. This green movement, I don't know if it's a plot or if these people are actually serious, but, uh, you know, buy the nicest windmill you can find and put it up and destroy your valley. Uh, they are they are just killing the United States. This uh, green movement is, is, it's laughable, except that it has such serious consequences. And so they don't want to drill oil because they said they wouldn't. I mean, he'll, he'll have to break down, I imagine. But the level of stupidity, the level of incompetence is something that, nobody's ever seen even uh, europe is you know europe which rips us off very good also by the way you notice they're buying the russian oil but we're not okay they continue to buy because they built the pipeline that should have never been built you know they have uh, Nord stream 2 you never heard of that until i came along and i said to merkel i threw her the flag of surrender i said you're not going to be able to ever have a dispute with russia and here's the flag of surrender i don't know what she was doing when she approved that pipeline it was a Nord Stream 2, it's called, so, and so terrible. And then I had it stopped. It was totally stopped. And Biden came in and he approved it. And he closed down the Keystone Pipeline, our pipeline. But he approved the, big, the biggest pipeline in the world going in from Russia or into various parts of Europe, in particular Germany. So they don't know what they're doing. The Afghanistan situation was a disaster because... Afghanistan showed that we're incompetent the way he moved out. You know, I had it down to 2,000 soldiers, and we were getting out with power and strength and dignity, and uh, it would have been in a similar period of time. We were getting out, and uh, we, we didn't lose one soldier in Afghanistan in, 14, in 18 months. And, you know, it's all these different things, but I do believe the stupidity of our border, and maybe in particular the uh, 
withdrawal, the incompetence, the way it was done, the incompetence of moving the military out first, leaving $85 billion worth of equipment and dead soldiers and Americans behind. Uh, so, so sad. And when Putin and Xi, President Xi, that'll be next, China, when they saw what happened in Afghanistan, the way we got out, a general that didn't know what the hell he was doing, Think of it, leaving $85 billion worth of equipment, 700,000 machine guns and rifles, 70,000 armor-plated trucks. It's not even believable. That's not even believable. So we are run by people that are grossly incompetent and that didn't win the election, by the way, just in case you had any questions. Mr. President, you mentioned China a second ago. My, my reasons for supporting you in the primary, and we were one of the early voices in South Carolina that came out publicly and endorsed your campaign, supported your campaign, was the hardball way in which you dealt with China. It, explain yeah. to us why, why you believe that China is such a geopolitical threat and adversary as we move forward. Well, they're a tremendous threat, and they do things that are well, so economically unbelievable and really illegal. And we, uh, as an example, they have free trade, but there's no free trade because they tax the hell out of us. When we sell a car to China, they tax us a massive amount. When they sell one to us, until I came along, they didn't tax. So it was so unfair. And what they do is they, they establish a, a deficit. So we have a yearly, uh, we had, we got it way down, but now it's higher than it's ever been. He's let that stuff go. But we, we had, when I first came in, we had a $507 million deficit with China. $507 billion. So think of it with a B. $507 billion a year deficit with China. It's not even sustainable, but it, it had gone on for many years. So I started realizing, and I knew it long before, that's probably why you endorsed me early, but, and, and I appreciate that. It's also why I'm talking to you as opposed to other people that weren't as smart as you. But the fact is, we had a tremendous deficit with China. They were they were just ripping us left and right. Everything they did was to hurt us economically and to get gain for them. So they charged us massive tariffs and taxes, and we didn't charge them anything. Then I came in, and, you know, our steel companies were out of business because China was dumping steel all over the place. They were just dumping it, not even high quality, but they were dumping it. And they were putting our steel companies in a very precarious position, and I came in and I imposed a 25 and in some cases a 50 percent tariff on steel. And I saved the, the steel companies in this country. In fact, Biden hasn't taken it off yet because he's afraid to take it off because they know that'll be the end of our steel companies. And people that run those companies, people in the steel business, every time I see them, they're almost crying. They were so happy. They said, you saved us just in time. These are big companies that were going down because of what China was doing. No, it's a. It's a terrible threat to our nation, and, you know, it's just a, it's, it's beyond terrible. And then they build a, a military like nobody's ever seen before. You know, they take all that money, that $507 billion, they take that money and they build so many ships, so many planes. You have to see the, the weapons that they're building. It's a very, very bad situation. Right, last question. I've often believed that endorsements don't matter. Yours does. No question about it. Your endorsement carries enormous weight, enormous value. You've endorsed a couple of candidates. You'll be in our hometown this Saturday for a rally in Florence, South Carolina, in support of Katie Arrington in the 1st Congressional District and Russell Fry in the 7th Congressional District. Uh, that's why you're coming to town. But i got to believe that you are still um, – ambitious about this political movement this is not singularly about endorsing a congressional candidate but rather continue to inspire a group of republicans to to demand better of its federal government well it is and you know i'm uh, i'm an opponent of somebody called nancy mace she's been absolutely rude and terrible and we want to get people in the republican party that are going to fight for us they're not going to go woke they're not going to be democrats they're not going to be you know with policies that are destroying our cities. You look at what the Democrats are doing. They're destroying our cities. And Nancy Mace, we, we have a wonderful ca a person who is a really fantastic person, fantastic woman in Katie Arrington, and she's, I think, going to do very well. But I'm going there because we want to beat Nancy Mace in the primary, and she should be beaten in the primary. She's done a terrible job. Nasty person. And the other one, of course, is this guy Rice, uh, he didn't know what the hell he was doing. He lifted his arm for the impeachment, 
And uh, he, two days later, he said, I had no idea I was committing political suicide when I did it, because I think I'm in a, like a plus 28. We, I won, first of all, I won your state by a lot. I love your state. I love them. You know, it's interesting. I won Alabama by a record, the biggest vote in history. I won South Carolina by a record, the biggest vote in history. And then Georgia, I lost it by a whisker. Let me tell you, you don't lose Georgia when you won Alabama and South Carolina by the biggest votes ever. And we won Georgia by massive votes, but it was it was just absolutely corrupt what they did. And uh, that's coming out now. The, all those numbers are coming out now. You saw where it came out. I, I'm not sure, but uh, two days ago they announced in Wisconsin the election was totally corrupt. Now they're going to see whether or not they want to overturn it in Wisconsin, and they probably will. But they came out after an exhaustive study by a Supreme Court Justice uh, Gableman. He was a fantastic. He is a fantastic man. Came out with a study that it was corrupt in Wisconsin, and that they should overturn the vote. So it's really uh, a lot of things are happening in Arizona, in, in Georgia, in a lot of states. Now your state. Uh, it was interesting because I won by so much, but there was probably cheating there. The, the Democrats cheat like hell. That's all they know how to do. And, you know, I don't even believe they're a 50-50 party because who would want to vote for no voter ID, defund the police, a bad military, high interest rates, high taxes, uh, no energy independence? And who's going to vote? That's a 10 percent issue. That's not anything else. And and I really just think that they're, they're good at one thing, cheating in elections and so keep your guard up. But I'll be there. And I hear we have a really big crowd. And it'll be Saturday. And uh, I hope you're going to be there. We'll say hello. You've been you've been so nice to me and to this incredible movement. I call, We call it the MAGA movement because it really is. It's the biggest, it's the most incredible movement the country's ever had. We and, will, uh, we're we, going to do it again. And the poll numbers are through the roof. We're going to do it again. And uh, we're doing it right now. It's not even again. We're doing it. Uh, it's become automatic, and, and it's a movement of common sense, and it's a movement of putting our country first. Mr. President, we certainly welcome you to our state. This has been an honor. We appreciate your time this morning. I will be there Saturday, and we're going to take the time between now and Saturday to make sure that there are many, many, many more America Firsters and, and MAGA movement members to um, – to try to continue to drive this agenda and um, and do right by the country. I know that's, uh, at the end of the day, what you want. Well, thank you, and come back and see me, and I'll see you there. We'll, we'll, get, we'll put on a really good show. You're going to have a good show, and uh, we'll be looking for you. We're going to be looking for you, and your people are fantastic. And say hello to everybody. I'll see everybody on Saturday afternoon. Thank you, Mr. President. Have a great day. Thank you. Great honor. Thank you. Great honor. There's the 45th President of the United States. Um, as normal and as expected, uh, unfiltered. Uh, <laughs> awesome. Yeah, yeah. That uh, was awesome. Uh, that was <laughs> that very, was very, very cool. We are no longer a feeble attempt at Radio Brits. What we're are we? Big time. We're, we're big time now. <laughs> we just had an American president over the year. Congratulations to Cato and Rev. And I mean that sincerely. Wake up, Carolina, on the iCorridor Talk Network.